everyone, welcome back to the latest update of the Fazer News, and here they are. Don Leandro Maria Alves ordained as the new bishop of the Baucau Diocese. On July 21, 2023, Don Leandro Maria Alves officially ordained as the Bishop of Baucau Diocese by Cardinal Virgilio do Carmo da Silva, STB, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Dili. The Episcopal ordination ceremony of Bishop Leandro Maria Alves took place at Baucau Cathedral. The announcement appointment of Leandro Maria Alves as a bishop by Pope Francis officially on April 26, 2023, to succeed the late Baucau's Bishop Basilio do Nascimento, whom passed away on October 30, 2021. Bishop Leandro Maria Alves was born on May 10, 1974, in Hermera Municipality of Timor-Leste. During his priesthood career, Bishop Leandro Maria Alves held several positions in the Roman Catholic Church of Timor-Leste, including the position of parish vicar of the Dili Cathedral, professor at the St. Peter and St. Paul Major Seminary, as well as being the director of the St. Paul Diocesan Foundation of Dili, and he also accountable for several educational projects in the Timor-Leste's Catholic Church. The ordination ceremony were attended by bishops of Atambua, Indonesia, Darwin, Australia, Timorese officials, as well as the Timor-Leste Catholics who came from various parts of the country. Singaporean Foreign Minister and Orta discussed the development of Timor-Leste in the future. The Singaporean Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan met with Timorese President of Republic Jose Ramos Orta at the Presidential Palace in Delhi. The meeting was discussed the development issue of the country in the future. To me, a very uh, privileged meeting with uh, President Jose Ramos Horta, who is an old friend of Singapore. Uh, he has many admirers, many uh, friends and supporters in Singapore. And uh, the issues that he's championing, in particular on maternal and child health, uh, jobs for Timorese and Timor-Leste's uh, membership of ASEAN and his views on the next 50 years, the next century of development in Timor-Leste. Uh, we had a very fascinating and you know, deep conversation both this morning as well as last night when he so generously hosted us in his home. So. It's a privilege for me. I'm honored to be here. And I think this, this is a time of great opportunity for the people of Timor-Leste. Balakrishnan visited to Timor-Leste in order to strengthen bilateral cooperation between the two countries and also to discuss Timor-Leste's succession process to ASEAN. Lost people still suffer from unexploded ordnance trope by United States in Vietnam War. Laos, a small country in Southeast Asia, is still grappling with deadly war remnants five decades after the last bombs were dropped by United States forces during the Vietnam War that killing tens of thousands of civilians. I picked up my grandson's wounded body. He died from the explosion. I always think about this incident. When I work it, I always think about it. A decade ago, it was just a normal day. Young boys were playing as usual. When they found a small round object, they tried to cut it open with a knife, an earth-shaking explosion, a sound that haunts still even to this day. Between 1964 and 1973, the Americans flew more than half a million missions over Laos, dropping more than 2.5 million tons of bombs every 8 minutes, 24 hours a day, for 9 straight years. Lao PDR was subjected to a very heavy bombing campaign. And over those years, uh, it is estimated that more than 2 million tons of bombs were dropped on the country. We know that still to this day, all 18 provinces uh, of Lao PDR are contaminated. Children account for 40% of victims. The ailure is fatal, a curse that lasts a lifetime. People who try so hard to move once aid that the war never really ends, it silently lingers in rice fields, school playgrounds, villages and countryside, ready to claim more innocent victims. China ready to promote steady sustained relations with Philippines. 
Chinese President Xi Jinping in the meeting with former Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte at the Yao Yutai State Guest House in Beijing, said China ready to promote steady and sustained development of relations with the Philippines. She said China and the Philippines are both developing countries in Asia with development rooted in good neighborly and friendly surrounding environment and a big Asian family of win-win cooperation. Noting China always attaches importance to China-Philippines relations, she expressed the hope that Duterte can continue to play an important role in promoting friendly cooperation between the two countries. For his part, Duterte thanked the Chinese side for its valuable support for economic and social development of the Philippines, especially for its generous aid in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Developing friendly relations with China is in the interest of the two peoples and also meets the aspirations of most Filipinos, adding that he is willing to play a role in promoting Philippines-China friendship. Senior Chinese diplomat calls for efforts to safeguard peace stability in East Asia. Senior Chinese diplomat Wang Yi called on the East Asia Summit to make efforts to safeguard regional peace and stability given profound changes in the international and regional situation. Wang said, Asian centrality is a neutral result of the historical evolution and the greatest common ground of all parties, noting that it is unreasonable for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO to get involved in the East Asia. Regional peace depends on the common development and prosperity of all countries and should not be based on the few countries' pursuit of absolute security. China stands ready to explore cooperation with other parties centered on the Global Security Initiative and reiterated its willingness to lead in signing the protocol to the Treaty on the Southeast Asia Nuclear Weapon Free Zone. Wong urged joint efforts to safeguard the right direction of economic globalization and stay committed to an open, free, fair, inclusive and rule-based multilateral trading system. Profile of Cambodia Hun Sen ahead of election on Sunday. Cambodians will go to the polls and strongman Hun Sen, who has ruled Cambodia for close to 40 years, is looking certain for securing yet another victory with no clear opposition in sight. 70-year-old Hun Sen leads the ruling Cambodians People Party ahead of the 18 other political parties are taking part in this election. While the main opposition candlelight party, CLP, has been barred from contesting by Cambodia's election commission. He has said he defected to Vietnam in mid-1977 and played no part in Pol Pot's bloody agrarian revolution in which an estimated 1.7 million people or a third of the population died. He has portrayed himself as the man who saved Cambodia from the terror and chaos from the Khmer Rouge years in the 1970s and the civil war that followed. According to the National Election Commission figures, at the last election in 2018, Hun Sen's political party won all of the 125-member parliamentary seats in the lower house, having scored 4.8 million votes out of the 6.9 million cast. There are 9.7 million people this year on the registered voting list. Thailand police arrest for suspects in connection with the murder of German realtor in Thailand. Thailand police said four suspects believed to be involved in the murder of a German real estate agent were charged and placed in the custody. Thailand police conducted a raid on a nightclub and apprehended one of the suspects. In the course of the investigation, police said they discovered evidence pointing to the premeditated murder of Hans Peter Mack, 62, whose dismembered body parts were found in the freezer. Police said the suspects had acquired a speedboat to dispose the body at the sea and were now facing charges of attempted murder and intentional concealment of a corpse. According to the local news, three of the suspects are German nationals, while one is a Pakistani with Thai nationality. They have all denied the charges brought against them. Thailand's deputy national police chief, Surachate Hakparn, said that he has instructed his team to compile and deliver all relevant information on the case within a two-week time frame. Thailand Alliance will name its candidate for Prime Minister today. Thailand's Thai Party stated their leadership role in forming the government and revealed their intention to nominate a Prime Ministerial candidate from their party. The eight-party alliance seeking to form Thailand's next government will name its candidate for Prime Minister today, 25 July 2023, two days ahead of a parliamentary vote on the premiership. Thai party leader Shalanan Sri Kyo declined to say who the alliance would nominate. 
but a big obstacle for their alliance is the 249 member Senate, which was appointed by the Royalist Army after the 2014 coup. The resistance underlines the threat posed by move forward the anti-establishment agenda, which includes ending business monopolies and amending Article 112 of the Criminal Code, a tough law that insulates the monarchy from Republic criticism. Thailand election winners make way for allies after Prime Minister bid fails. A senior official said Thailand's election winning move for a party will let alliance partner the Thai party lead the formation of a government after its prime ministerial candidate failed to get parliament's backing. Party secretary general Chai Tawa Tulaton told a press conference that move forward to back any candidate Thai will put forward for prime minister in a parliamentary vote scheduled for on July 27. Meanwhile, the leader of Thailand's Thai party, the runner-up in the May election, an eight-party alliance needed to garner more support from parliament to stand any chance of forming the next government. Move Forward and Thai have 151 and 141 seats in 500-member lower house, respectively, but the alliance needs the backing of more than half of the combined chambers, including an upper house senate appointed by the military, which blocked Pita's bid. Cambodia's seventh general election kicks off on last Sunday. A National Election Committee spokesman said the seventh general election kicked off in Cambodia on Sunday, July 23rd, with a total of 18 political parties take part in the race. More than 9.7 million eligible voters are expected to cast their ballots in the election, which is held once every five years to elect the members of parliament for the 125-seat National Assembly. A National Election Committee spokesman said a total of 7,912,081 people had voted by the noon local time or 81.48% of the 9,710,655 registered voters. The preliminary results are expected to be announced on Sunday evening and Monday morning and the official ones will be released on August 9. In the last general election held in 2018, the CPP won all 125 seats in the National Assembly. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in today. We'll see you all again soon.